Oh, all right. Okay. All right. So, um, some examples of unreliable narrators are um, Johnny from House of Leaves. He's in the footnotes, and he introduces the main character. And at first, you think that he's a trustworthy point of view, but it turns out that he is not all there, as it's revealed later on with his rambling uh, asides about, like, a minotaur following him into, into the maze. And you realize that, you know, if he's not a liar, but you can't believe everything that you read. Another example is, like, in Party of One of My Little Pony, when it was showed that Pinkie Pie had a mental breakdown under the stress of trying to make everyone happy, which launched um, Cupcakes a fame, where it had a crazy Pinkie Pie kind of, like, uh, doing not safe for work things to Rainbow Dash that were rather gory. And if you've read Worm or Ward, then you know that Taylor Hebert, uh, who goes by Skitter, is another example of an unreliable narrator. She, like, takes on the weight of the whole world on her shoulders. So we're going to go through a couple things in this panel. Like, how can you shock and surprise your reader with unexpected twists? Why do readers like horror? What are some parts or, or episodes of My Little Pony that scared you? Is there anything you found unsettling about Equestria? In fan fiction, how do we use these tools effectively? And uh, a tool like Dan Harmon's Story Circle or the Act of the Rise Climax in the Fall. And we'll go through some examples of psychological horror and manipulation through the use of the same characters. And then we'll take some questions from attendees. So let me see if I can find my, um, my panel. All right, the panel notification didn't go up. Well, that's going to make taking questions harder. All right, so I'll just proceed like I don't have an audience. What is psychological horror? Psychological horror is a subgenre of horror fiction that relies on a character's fears, guilt, belief, eerie sound effects, relevant music, and emotional instability to build tension and further the plot. So this is the kind of uh, genre that relies less on spook effects and jump scares and more on setting and the actual characters to provide thrills to the viewer. So psychological horror, and they just said that, yeah. Psychological horror is different from the type of horror found in splatter or ultra-violent films, which derive their effects from gore and violence, and from the subgenre of horror of personality, in which the object of horror does not look like a monstrous other, but rather a normal human being. Alright, so what is an unreliable narrator or psychological horror as a genre? So I did list some of these earlier, but I'll go ahead and go through them again. There's um, Pinky from Party of One, or in fan fiction in Cupcakes, which spawned a whole a whole uh, other series of works like uh, Ask Pink and Meaning Diane Pie by Crooked Trees, for example. So again, in Parahumans, Skitter starts off as a villain, becomes a hero, and then saves the world as a villain by basically, sorry, spoilers, but basically by mind-controlling all the, all the heroes. And the way I'm lying there, is, and they were finally all working together. And and Ward, the follow-up to Worm, basically deals with the repercussions of all these uh, heroes having been mind-raped, basically, and, and trying to deal with that and going through therapy. So Johnny Truant is from House of Leaves, and he's one of the point-of-view characters that helps introduce the fantastical elements from an everyman point of view. So he's kind of like our ordinary down-to-earth character, which is different from the person living in the House of Leaves, for instance. And Starlight Glimmer also qualifies pre-redemption. She's not trustworthy. She's totally convinced that she's on the right side of fate. So unreliable char narrators are a character whose telling of the story is not completely accurate or credible, due to problems with the character's mental state or maturity. Um, let's see. Oh, I need to join voice? Okay, I'm in You've voice. You've brought so many people together during this time. Uh, is, this, is this the right one? Yep. Yeah, okay, right cool. One. What's going on? 
All right, so I'm I'm just running down through unreliable narrators. Okay. So is, your screen seems to be okay. I've okay. got good audio. You're live. All right, great. Um, yeah, I'm just running through my my pre-planned thing. So an unexpected okay. twist is anything. Am I gonna? I'm gonna be talking over everyone. I'm sorry. An unexpected yeah, twist. chat. I just thought that you needed help, but you're doing. Great. Oh, I'm good. Oh, okay. I'll just, just pop back out, out, and you're all good. Oh, all right. All right, so an unexpected twist is anything not clearly broadcasted or foreshadowed in advance, but makes sense in hindsight. So the aha moment is where everything clicks. And readers like horror because it makes their real life or surroundings seem less invasive or because they like to live vicariously. So they'll often say something like, my real life is bo boring and this makes me feel something. Sorry, I'm still trying to get a link to the stream so I can give it to my friends. All right, so um, I'm not able to take fewer questions at this point, so I'll just have to. I'm just. Hi guys, I'm doing a panel, and um, I wanted to take uh, some viewer questions. Like, what parts of MLP scared you? Does anyone want to jump in with that? No, I have a lot of, uh, of episodes that made me not being scared, but being. Like the one with the Apple Jack's mother and father, you know. Oh, so Apple, Apple Jack's, Jack's mother unsettled you? you? That was really sad, not really something frightening. Do you mean you have a. Ah, so. As I see, you have a. One moment. Where is it? Here it is. Psychological horror and the use of insanity is your pen. Yeah, I'm actually streaming right now. I was trying to take some audience questions. I couldn't find the right chat room, so I just jumped into one. Huh. So, welcome here. Okay. So, what can I remember that actually was key? All right. So, like, uh, for me, I was legitimately afraid of changelings. After the Canterlot wedding, and I said the idea that someone you love is an imposter is a very deep-rooted fear that we never really know someone. And then I, I also said that the Pinkie Pie duplication episode and how easily they just poof those clones really didn't really sit, sit well with me. Actually, the one that was quite scary was the reference that uh, Chrysalis made when she turned the head um, on, on the full round. When she turned what? Uh, when she turned her head around, you know... Uh, oh, I didn't remember, remember that. When she was fighting... Uh, oh, yeah, I remember that now. That Chrysalis is, like, psychological horror incarnate. Yeah, yeah, of course. Let's see, I've still got 20 minutes run time. I don't want to bore you guys by the panel, so... All right, so fan fiction works the same way as regular fiction, but standards are often lowered when publishing online. We use the uh, same writing tools as regular authors, but with a less stringent process. And there are two types of writers, planners and pantsers. In order to write these tool of fic... In, you know, uh, give me just a moment to get untied. Huh. Just a moment. I'm updating my status with the new um, panel. Okay, so if there are two types of writers, planners and pantsers. So in order to use those tools effectively, a, reader, a writer should read as much or more than they write. Okay, so a planner uh, plans ahead and makes a plot outline and does their very best to stick to it. And a pantser writes by the seat of their pants. So I'm more of a pantser than I am a planner. But during a National Novel Writing Month this, uh, this last year, I tried a little bit of both. I had some days where I pantsed it entirely onto my blog, and I had some days where I had a very strict plot outline, and I, I adhered to that plot outline very closely. 
and um, and I kept word counts. I was in writing groups where we posted word counts daily. I discovered the writing community hashtag on Twitter, and I would say about 500 or more of my followers came from that writing community hashtag. Because it turns out that authors are very voracious readers and are always looking for that next book. So the more you read, the more you observe and learn from other writers with fan fiction. Uh, you want to study the show, read other fanfics, and expose yourself to other media frequently. And uh, like I wrote here, be critical about it. You're going to actively listen and engage. You're not just going to passively watch. You're not just going to slug or get stoned. You're going to like... It's sort of like when you're doing a book report in school. You know, you really take notes, you highlight sections, you ask yourself questions about it when you're done. And um, in order to be a really good writer, I know it's supposed to be psychological order, but in order to be a good writer of any genre, you must practice. So during the Remo, we had two phrases, which were just right and you can't edit a blank page. And mastery comes from failing a thousand times first before you become a master or something. So um, down here I've put in, let me just take a moment to breathe. All right, so down here I've put in Dan Harmon's story circle. So uh, it starts out with the character in a zone of comfort, and then there's conflict because they want something, maybe they can't get it. Then they enter an unfamiliar situation. They're starting to adapt to it. They get what they want. They pay a heavy price. They return to the familiar situation, but they've changed. And there's like a little screenshot of Evil Morty. So moving along with that, um, psychological horror and fan fiction is going to take the characters and twist them. So it's not going to be quite the character that you've known and loved. It's going to be that character through a little bit of a dark lens. Like through a scanner darkly, if you're a Philip K. Day fan. So uh, it's not things as you've known them, it's things as they've changed. So something in the setting or something in that character has caused them to lose their mind or lose touch with reality, and that, you know, that, that changes things around them. Like, let's say a character starts to be suspicious of everyone around them, so they don't trust anyone, not even their closest friends. So that's going to create a lot of tension. And that's where I wanted to bring in the Story Mountain plot graph. So um, you'll have the beginning, which introduces the characters and the setting. There's also other ways of introducing it, such as in media res, race, in media race, in the middle, where you start in the middle of an action scene. But they, it still introduces the characters and setting by way of throwing you right in. Then there's uh, rising action. This is where things start to go wrong. And as you can see, there's little humps along the way. So there'll be like times where the characters are just chilling out or maybe they're just going to the bathroom or making dinner or something really ordinary. And that sets the tone before the tension ramps up, ramps up, ramps up. And uh, psychological horror is all about that climax, that big reveal, that, you know, huge aha moment where things finally come together. You know, the character's motivation is revealed, something that is, is wrong with the water, there's time travel, uh, maybe someone tried to kill them, maybe they, they weren't insane all along, you thought they were unreliable narrator, but actually they were a reliable narrator. That's another way to subvert expectations. So people thought they were reading a psychological horror and actually it was just plain old horror. And then um, at that point, things start to, to either come undone or become solved, depending on whether you're writing a tragedy or a bittersweet or happy ending. And that's what's called falling action. And the denouement is uh, how things end. So a lot of people, like the number one thing people say they don't like about fanfics, besides being unfinished, is a bad ending. You want to have a really strong introduction you want to have a really strong climax, and you want to really stick that ending. Because that's going to be the impression the readers are left of your work at the end. So they're not going to be very likely to recommend your fanfic, for instance, if you don't have a very good, uh, if you don't have a very good ending. Uh, let's see. Give me just a moment to catch up here. I have an echo. God damn it. Well, let me try to switch the mic input. 
Yeah, that's, that's why. Okay. Do I still have an echo? Well, I guess it is what it is. Um, this is the part where I jump into my own stream and see what's going on. So, uh, we're coming up to the part where I take viewer questions. Yeah, I'm here. I'm just like, is, am I having technical issues? Can you not hear me? I was just kind of leaving it on that page for a minute. So this is the part where I wanted to take your questions. I kind of ran through it a little fast. Oh, okay. I have another microphone. The, uh, the webcam had better filtering on, but it might be echoing. Let me try the other one for the sure digital. Is this a better microphone? Okay, um, I think I'm seeing where there might be an echo. Is there still an echo now? Is that any better? Actually, no, I think I muted the wrong one. Testing. Testing. All right, well, it looks like it's working. Okay, so at this point, I wanted to take a question from the audience, if anyone's still... Okay, there's very barely any people here. All right, that's better. All right, cool. Um, so I wanted to ask for examples of uh, insane characters that change the story or setting for you and just talk about those for the rest of the time. All right, awesome. Yeah, sorry about that. Next time I do a panel, I'll know to use my Sure Digital. This is actually my first time doing an online panel. So, like, for me, the Joker in Batman was something that changed the setting for me. I think that Harley Quinn also uh, classifies as someone that has insanity due to her repeated traumas. So, basically, any character that has repeated trauma and co doesn't come through it clean as a whistle might qualify for someone that uh, could be insane. So, like, the kind of things that cause uh, a reality break for someone that's usually sane are going to be a lot of stress and pressure and what's called triggers. So you want to plan out, for instance, in psychological horror, you want to plan out your triggers in advance. So like if, for instance, the character is afraid of cats, maybe there's a cat that's always following them and it's just a normal cat, but they slowly start to lose their mind. They think it's a demon or something. Um... Let me open a tab real quick for House of Leaves, because that was my main one for Unreliable Narrator. So, Johnny Truant serves a dual role as primary editor of Zampano's academic study of the Navidson record, and the protagonist as revealed through footnotes and appendices. So in House of Leaves, the house is actually expanding, and it's like a kind of alien spaceship or something. It's never really explained what it is. It's just this big malevolent force. So in the beginning of the book, Truant appears to be normal, a reasonably attractive young man who happens upon a trunk full of notes left behind by the now-dead Zampano. And as Truant begins to do uh, editing, however, he begins to lose the grip he has on reality and his life begins to erode around him. He stops bathing, rarely eats, stops going to work, and distances- wow, that sounds like quarantine- and distances himself from essentially everyone in pursuit of organizing the book into a finished work that he hopes will finally bring him peace. This sounds like every writer ever. <laughs> Initially intrigued by Zampano's isolative ten tendencies and surreal sense of reality, Johnny unknowingly sets himself up as a victim in the dawning task that awaits him. As he begins to organize Zampano's manuscripts, his personal footnotes detail the deterioration of his own life with analogous references to alienation and insanity. Once a trans trespasser to Zimpano's mad realm, Truant seems to become more comfortable in the environment as the story unfolds. He even has hallucinations that parallel those of Zimpano, 
and members of the house church team when he senses something inhuman behind him. So basically, the the book he's editing starts to become real uh, for him in the footsteps. Yeah, it's that book is by Mark C. Danielewski. And I've heard, actually, that, that they have a new book called The Familiar. So if you're reading House of Leaves, I highly recommend the other one as well, despite not having read it, just by dint of that author being really good. This author was the one that probably got me into psychological horror, not Stephen King. Here, let me just link the Wikipedia that I just read. I know sometimes it helps to read it yourself. And this was, this was my example for psychological horror because for me it was a profoundly affecting book. I was uh, actually visiting my first boyfriend in Missouri at the time and I got so wrapped up in this book they were like, I hate the fact you brought this book. But you know what? That boyfriend didn't last but the love affair with House of Leaves did. So in the end, books are superior to boyfriends. Yeah, the the digital version's not so good. I took a look at the PDF, and it's not great. I, I read it in print form. In fact, I got it when it was first released, because it was kind of a big thing in sci-fi circles at the time. Um, this subreddit are books. You can get you can get your writing. You can get cool book recommendations there, and there's like 50 million subreddits for writing. But again, I do recommend the writing community hashtag on Twitter. So you, there's something called microfiction and VSS poem. So microfiction is the length of a tweet or several tweets into a short story, and VSS poem is um, a short form poem, usually with a GIF accompaniment, and other writers will, you know, like it and retweet it for you and give you exposure. I should try No Sleep. Thank you for recommending that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some My Little Pony themed stuff for No Sleep. And um, so if you use Twit Longer, it'll also archive your your short stories. If you're like me and it's really late at night and you just want to dash off 700 words or something and then go to bed, this will archive it so you can look at it and edit it later. So it's really great for um, saving those like dream logs. If A dream log is a really powerful thing if you're a horror writer. It taps into the collective unconscious and your unconscious. I wanted to major in psychology. So, um, yeah, maybe we could, maybe in the general chat we could we could organize a group write around like some no sleep stories and we could do it like an anthology that would be really fun it could be like someone falling asleep and every night they have a different dream so that's just a thought for audience participation oh god I still have six more minutes what am we gonna talk about let's see um I think other you know I wanted to talk about this too but the 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 ending where they decide to petrify the three uh, villains, Chrysalis, Tyrick, and Cozy Glow, instead of redeeming them in, like, you know, because friendship is magic. I guess friendship isn't magic. Because for me, the finale was horror. And I was like, oh god, the princesses are evil, and Discord is like Satan tempting them into the evil path to then be cursed to be petrified for 2,000 years. The very thing that he hated. <laughs> um, I think a lot of people like taking something for kids and making it more adult and one way of making it more adult is to insert those horror elements without going uh, uh, the not safe for work route so by inserting those horror elements like for instance uh, like slasher fix slasher fix um if you have someone go insane just start killing someone, that's pretty that's pretty antithesis to like friendship is magic's whole modus operandi, which is, you know, friendship can redeem anyone, no one is unsavable. I mean, up until the finale. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna say it. Stephen King is a hack. His only good work was Doom Key. I mean, I guess I liked some others. I liked It. I liked Carrie. And that's about it. (laughs) 
So if anyone knows any good horror books or horror manga, send them along. I'm a big fan of Junji Ito. They influence not just my writing, but also my art as well. So my art started to become more cross-hatched and more detail in, uh, in the shading. I feel like Stephen King is overrated. And Junji Ito, everyone should know Junji Ito, and everyone should know that Junji Ito has a cat with a, like, a death's head skull on its back. How metal is that? That's, like, the most metal thing I can possibly imagine. <laughs> My favorite one was Uzumaki, actually. And that one with the girl that turns into everything. I'm forgetting... <laughs> One more man. <laughs> yeah, he made a lot of clunkers. So, like, when you're writing horror, you can't expect for your first fanfic or your first story to be a bestseller, basically. You've got to just go ahead and try for good enough and be satisfied that you wrote something, anything, and God out there. Because the hardest part with writing is getting up the nerve to press publish on it. Even if you know it's got typos, you know your characters are acting out of character, you know the plot's rushed, you know the writing's just not coming together. You know... You gotta, you gotta just push all that to the side and hit publish. Because let me tell you, there are 15-year-olds right now probably writing the next Homestuck. You know, and we don't even know them yet because they haven't become popular outside of their closed circles. Hey, what are you doing? So it's, it's all about, it's not just about exposure. It's about trusting yourself and trusting in yourself to do the writing. Like, uh, go back to your own life experiences. Go back to things that spooked you as a kid or things that you find unsettling. Almost everyone is afraid of the dark. Almost everyone turns around and sees figures in the shadows. That's called pareidolia, where we see faces and things that aren't faces. Um, for me, The Quiet Place was one of the best horror films I've seen in recent memory, along with Us. And the wham line for me with us was when they go, we're Americans. And I was like, wow. And it just, it all clicked together for me. The whole doppelganger plot and like everything they were saying for Jordan Peele. Like that's the kind of horror we should all be writing. Something that has a bigger message. I haven't seen It Follows. Um, wait, yes I did. That one was cringy for me, but I can't explain it. Like I get what I was trying to do, but it made me laugh half the time. The whole pool scene just destroyed it for me. I was on the hook before that. Um, we're almost out of time, which is good because I'm running out of things to talk about. Um, for me, the scariest character is actually Princess Luna, not Nightmare Moon, because Princess Luna fighting the Tantabus, like, literally made me cry because, like, this whole huge weight she's carrying on her shoulders is something that really personally resonated with me. All right. Um, I think I'm out of time, so yeah. I'll leave it streaming for now, but I think, I think I'm done. So, my favorite horror movie is still Us.
Alright, so I'll just stop streaming now.